Today I'm going to give you a quick guide on this building right here, which is the Trading Post in Farthest Frontier. The Trading Post can be built as a Tier 2 building under amenities and services, so as soon as your Town Hall has been upgraded to Level 2, you can build the Trading Post. And as I'm sure you're aware, it will enable you to buy and sell goods, but it's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. If I click on the Trading Post, it will open up the GUI right here. If we click up here, we can actually move this around on our screen to wherever we prefer to have it. You'll see at the top here, you can have up to two workers in there and these workers are going to be charged with transferring goods to and from the trading post. So the more workers you have, the quicker that will happen. So the first thing you'll need to do is transfer gold with this button right here. When we click this, we see our global storage on the right and this is all of the gold we've collected from taxes that is in our town. And then on the left, we have the gold in the trading post. So you can see right now I've got 1340 that I've already put in my trading post and 782 in my global storage. And then you can just drag this slider to however much you want to transfer to your trading trading post versus what you keep in your global storage. The amount you transfer is entirely up to you. You will need gold in your global storage for things like building buildings that require the gold. But once you've done that, you'll see that it will appear over here and you can see there we go. I've got 1,340 gold in my trading post. So now when a trader arrives, I can use that to buy things. So looking at this GUI, you can see over here is your global stock of all the different items you have and you can scroll down to see the full list. Then the column next to it is your inventory. Now this is your inventory stock that you have at the trading post. So if we take the top one here, for example, we've got these candles. You can see that currently we have 196 out of 235. So the way we do this is we go to the transfer items here. If we left click on this, then we can select the number of candles we want to have in here. So you can simply drag that up and down and then hit confirm when you're happy. Now, every time my town produces candles, it will transfer them over to here and my inventory will slowly start to increase until it hits 235. At that point, any candles made will then be kept in my global inventory rather than being transferred here. You can, of course, change this at any time. So right now we're on 196 out of 235. If I bring that all the way down to less than what we've got here, then the workers at the trading post will transfer the candles from the trading post back into our global storage. So for example, we have this smoke meat right here. So if I go ahead and click move items to trading post, I can drag that up to the number I want. So if we wanted to have 10 of our 50 transferred over here, then we just set this to 10 and click confirm. And you'll see now this green icon has appeared and it's the same one that's hovering over the candles here. And these green icons mean that it's not yet met the amount that you're asking it to store in the trading post inventory. Basically, it's just telling you that this item is still being stocked. So basically what you're trying to do is build up your inventory over here of all the goods you would like to sell before a trader arrives. And also, of course, transfer all the gold across to buy things from that trader. In terms of traders arriving, this is something you just have to wait for. And it seems from playing that you get about one or two traders that arrive per year. Currently, you do not have any control over what goods the traders will bring when they arrive. However, it has been mentioned that in the roadmap for the traders hut, they are looking to include a feature where you can request goods for traders to bring to you. Of course, this game is still early development, so that is something perhaps they will add in the future. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you're not playing on pacifist mode, so you do have raiders and people that attack your town, the trading post will be a prime target. As such, it's worth knowing that any goods you have in here, if they're not protected properly, are going to be at risk when raiders arrive, and that does include the gold. So you should build this in an area that is well protected if you're not playing on pacifist mode by building your watchtowers and barracks and things like that nearby, and potentially even building some walls around it. Now, all that's left to do is show you what happens when a trader arrives. So I'm just going to keep playing through this game until I see one on screen. Oh, perfect timing. Look at that. Okay, I've just paused there and I promised I didn't do that on purpose, but I got a little bit of luck there. Here we go, guys. This is what a trader looks like when he arrives. So the wagon does stand out a bit. You can see here you've got these two balls at the front and this little bunting that goes around it. So you can tell that it's uh, a trader arriving. Now, as it happens, we have a second trader here on screen. So that's perfect. I can show you another example of how the trader looks. Again, the carriage being drawn by the two bulls and you can see a lot of goods on it, but uh, no bunting this time. So you have different ways that they can look, but it's sort of obvious and you can tell the difference between them and your wagon. Now, I'm really glad this happened because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me to get this to happen for the sake of this tutorial. But now I'm actually going to be able to show you what happens when you get more than one trader arriving at the trading post at a time. So let's set this to one speed. And this is our closest trader just here. So let's press play and we'll see what happens when he comes along. You want me to speed that up a little bit, actually. I didn't realize how slow they were. Okay, let's get that down a little bit now. And we'll see here, he'll come into the trading post. Now, when the trader arrives at the trading post, you'll get an icon. Oh my goodness, I <laughs> think his trades all just fell over. Hopefully some goods are left for us to buy. Okay, there we go. This is what I 
want to show you this icon right here. So this icon indicates that there's a trader here and uh, in case you miss it as it's arriving or whatever, then you'll hopefully see this icon. Now, when we open up our trading hut, you'll see that we have the trader one listed right here and the trader's inventory on the far right hand side. If things are grayed out and have a zero, that means that although he doesn't have any of these things himself, he would be willing to buy them from you. And when they're in full color, like you see here, then that means that he has them in stock at the number that's shown right here. And so you can buy them from him or you could still sell them to him if you wanted to. Now, our second trader is just arriving. So let's make sure he's nicely arrived and stopped. And then I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to pause the game here and let's go ahead and open up the trader GUI once again. And you see now we have trader one and we have trader two. And if we left click, we can go through the different inventories of what they are buying and selling. Now, in terms of buying and selling, you'll see here that you get a price and you also get these green arrows or red arrows next to it. Or sometimes you might just have the white lines. So if we look at these here, these are baskets and we have eight in our global stock right now. The buy and sell price there is at 11 and the two lines mean, and it says if you hover over it, that the trader is buying and selling these at an average price. Therefore, you'd only sell these if you particularly needed gold and only buy them if you particularly needed baskets. Obviously, he has zero in stock, but I'm just making the point if he did have some in stock. Now, if we look at these hide coats right here, you see the price is 27 and with two green arrows, it says there that he's actually buying and selling these at a far above average price. So one green arrow, like on the soap here, means that the trader is buying and selling at above average and two green arrows means far above average. As such, whenever you see green arrows, you want to sell to the trader because you're getting a very good price for them. And whenever you see red arrows, you want to buy from the trader because again, you're going to get a good price. Basically, you're either going to sell for more or you're going to buy for less. Now, in general, this can be a good thing to do a long term in the game in order to make money. Whenever you see things here that have the double red arrows, if you buy them, the chances are at some point in the future, you're going to be able to sell them for more than you've bought them for. This, of course, is just simple economics. And if you do go down this route, then over time, you will increase the amount of gold that you have. However, with multiple traders, sometimes you're actually able to make money instantly. And the way you do that is by comparing what each of them are buying and selling. So for example, you can see here that this trader one has an inventory of 100 hide coats that he's buying and selling for a price of 26. If we go back over to trader number two, you'll see that they don't have any stock of hide coats, but they are buying them for 27. So essentially for each coat that we buy from trader one, we can then sell it to trader two at a profit of one gold. So in this case, if we buy all 100 coats, we can then sell them instantly to make an instant 100 gold for doing zero work at all. Of course, this is incredibly useful and the bigger the gap you can get and the bigger price items you can do it with, the better. It's worth mentioning that at the top here, you get the trader's name and you also get how long until they are departing. So obviously you need to make sure you make your trades before they depart. What I like to do is as soon as a trader arrives, I'll hit the pause button to see what they're selling. That way, if there's something that they're selling that I really want to sell or something I really want to buy, then I have chance to transfer my gold or my items to the trading post before the trader leaves. It's also worth mentioning that there are certain items that can only be bought from the trader and Trader One has a good example here with this right here, which are the cows. Once you've bought cows, you can make pastures for them and get milk from them and things like this, but you do need to buy them initially from the trader. So items like that are really worth keeping an eye out for. And when you get the opportunity to buy them, if you're able to do so, it's probably worth buying them. It's also the case that you're sometimes able to buy resources from traders that you otherwise wouldn't be able to have in the game yet. So for example, you might be able to buy things like beer before you have the ability to make it yourself, or you might be able to buy like iron ore before you've got the ability to mine it. So the trader has a lot of uses in the game, everything from making gold to getting you the resources that you need at different points. Now to make a purchase from the trader, here is what you need to do. Let's say I want to buy some of this smoked meat right here. You hover over the gold window, which will highlight, and then you just left click it. So the first thing we do is move the slider to the number that we want to buy. And when we do that, it will tell you how much meat you're trying to buy in this instance, along with how much gold it's going to cost you. You can, if you want, just go ahead and left click here to highlight this and type in the exact number of the items you want to buy. So let's say we wanted to buy 60 of the smoked meat and it's going to cost us 240. Now you have two options. You can buy and stock or you can buy and transfer. Buy and stock means that when you buy these items, they'll be stored in the trading post. Buy and transfer means when you buy them, they'll be sent to the town storage. So it depends why in this case that with the meat, we are actually buying it. If we're buying it to trade with another trader, then we just want to stock it. However, if we're buying it so that we have more food for our villagers, then we want to buy and transfer it. Let's say we're going to buy and transfer and just left click there. And there we go. That transaction has now been completed. Now with the cows, let's say we wanted to buy a couple of cows here. So we left click on here and drag this up to number two. You can still buy and stock them in the trading post or buy and transfer them. I'm going to buy and stock them first to show you how this works. So we're going to left click there and then we're going to press play so that this will go through a bit of time. Okay. So as you can see now, our cows are currently in storage here at the trading post. Now, what I could also do is transfer these cows. So if I hit transfer items over here, we can move them into our global storage. Now, this is always slightly misleading because it looks as though this dial is as far left as it will go and yet it's still saying zero. However, that is just a bit of a visual illusion 
conclusion, because if we actually move this a little bit and then move it back, we can see that we move the two from the trading post to the global storage. So let's go ahead and hit confirm there. And again, let's press play so a bit of time passes. And our cows are now in our global stock, which is shown here on the trading post. So I just wanted to mention that you can store animals like cows here in the trading post, as well as in your town storage without needing to have like a pasture or a farm or something like that built to specifically store them. It's also worth mentioning when you click on a trader that you can see the amount of gold they have here in total. Now this can be important if you're trying to sell them certain things. You want to make sure that if you're trying to get all the gold out of them, then you get as much from them as possible. Now, if we were to buy something from this trader, we see here that his gold right now is 2757. So let's say we're going to buy some hide coats from him. Let's click right here on the hide coats and let's buy, I don't know, like four coats from him. That's great. Buy and stock. Let's click that. So if you're trading and you get to a point where the trader has run out of gold, but there's things you still want to sell him, you could technically buy things from him and then with that gold, sell other things to him. Not entirely sure when that's going to be useful, but I'm just trying to mention everything you can currently do with the trading post. So I believe that has covered just about everything there is to talk about when it comes to the trading post and hopefully certainly has given you all the information you need in order to use this in an efficient way. I'm really enjoying this game and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I just want to say for now, thank you so much for watching this one and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.